they talk, we give the enemy way too much credit. Yes. We give him way too much glory sometimes. Some people are like, oh, the devil's after me. The devil ain't after you. You are not that important. And I don't mean to degrade anybody. I'm just saying your calling is not that high. Jesus went to three people in person. In person. Jesus, Job, and who else? Who else did he go to? Judas. He embodied Judas. Right? So sometimes we concentrate so much on the things that are, because Jesus did speak more about hell than he did heaven. But he was trying to warn, warn us of a place that we don't want to go to. It's a place of torment. It's a place where you will be able to breathe, smell, taste. You will never sleep, ever. You will never have anything to eat. You will never have anything to drink. You will be in torment all of your life. I believe that when people go to hell and their punishment comes through, that they will be punished over and over and over and over of what they did on earth. I watched a show not recently, and it was about a guy who went to hell. He was there 30 days, and to him it was 30 years. And he was put like on a rock. And he was tortured day in and day out. And in order to turn him evil, they took him down from the rack, put somebody else up, and then it was his turn to torment that person. And I don't want to get too much into all of that. All I am saying is that we cannot give up on our walk towards Jesus. We cannot give up on our walk towards going to heaven. You know, we have people passing away. Last year I looked up how many people die every second, and it was 155,000. I'm sure that that's tripled by now with everything that is going on. People that have slipped into eternity. And I started to cry wondering how many people knew about Jesus, or how many rejected him. You know, that they don't believe that there's a place called hell. Even the Bible tells you where it is. Right? Heaven, we know that heaven is up there somewhere, but the Bible doesn't tell you its location. Right? We know that there's a third heaven, and the third heaven is where God dwells, and his angels, and all of that. The second heaven is suspense between heaven and then the third span, which is the atmosphere of the world. So when we look out into the atmosphere, that's the atmosphere that the devil possesses. He's the prince of the power of the air. The angels are not, the demons are not in hell, except for those that we bind and cast them, right? Heaven was not created for humans, neither was hell. The earth was created perfectly until Eve messed it all up. <laughs> you know? Um, they both did. They were equally just as guilty, right? But we are in a fallen world. In a fallen world. So I'm not going to ask you to open your Bibles. I'm just going to go ahead and read Revelations 21, uh, 22 through 27. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Imagine, no churches. The city does not need the sun nor the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. In other words, we're going to be shining too. Because we're going to be in our perfect body. Okay? Uh, no one day will, will get, will its gates ever be shut. There'll be no power enough, strong enough to shut those gates. For there will be no night there. We won't need sleep. 
we will be in our perfect bodies. Right? The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation 21, 22-27. Then going down, the angel showed me a river of water as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the two lambs down in the middle of the great street of the city. On each side, the river stood a tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the lamb, the lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will be no need for light of the Lamb or the light of the sun. For God, the Lord God, will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. And that's Revelation 22 through 16. John and the angel. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspired the prophets, sent his angels to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Now, you know your house better than anybody else, right? Yeah. You know, you probably know who, who walked through the door by the way they opened the door, right? My father had the tendency to slam the door, so I'm like, that's home. You know, you know when there's a noise out of place, and you're like, what's that? That's not part of my house. You know when your house is settled because you hear the yeah. right? And that doesn't scare you. You know your house. So have you ever come home after traveling and experienced a feeling of security and delight? Knowing that there's no place like home. That's right. Right? There's often a reassuring sense of comfort upon opening the door to a familiar thing and the awareness of being where you belong. The same goes for us for heaven. That's where we belong. And God will give us the key to enter heaven and be delighted and feel at home. Someone asked me, are we going to know each other in heaven? I said, yes. We're going to recognize each other. So we're going to remember everything we did on earth? I said, no, because then it wouldn't be heaven. Right? Because if you remember all the bad things, it wouldn't be heaven. So the Apostle John was given a glimpse of our future home, the New Jerusalem. You may be surprised to know that there was no church building in John's vision. For the Lord, the Almighty Lamb, are the temple. Revelations 21, 22. No longer would there be the, uh, the, the what's it called? The nominations? Divided up by the, the body of Christ. No, there will the sun, moon shine on the city that day. For the glory of God has illuminated it, and the Lamb is the Lamb. Revelations 21, 13. Imagine no need for electricity. Imagine. So, another feature of our future home is that the gates will always be open. Since sin won't be a factor, locks will not be necessary. In fact, nothing tainted will ever enter the future residence, not even death or decay. The abundant life we look forward to in Christ will be pure and unmarred. The feeling you have when you open your front door, is that a hint of what will feel upon arriving at the heavenly place of our Father as He prepared for us all. All will be restored, and all will last, will be at last truly at home. 
we will be restored into what he originally wanted us to be. The glorious body, the perfect body. You know, um, someone told me, well, heaven sounds boring. And I said, as opposed to what? Do you want to be in hell being tormented where the worm don't even die? I don't understand. So, here we are as Christians, walking, walking the walk, doing what we're supposed to be doing. And along the way, God is asking us to bring more people with us. More people, whether they attend this church, don't attend this church, wherever they go, that God is prepared a place for us. Jesus said, but I am going to my Father, where there's many mansions. If it were not so, I would not tell you. So I hope my house is next to yours. <laughs> Amen. 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 Because we're going to be able to run. We're going to be able to eat. We're going to be able to have all those wonderful things that we never had on earth. Imagine pure love. No crime. Just joy. Yes. Peace. And not to mention the crown of life. When we, flow, when we go before the master and cast our crowns before him. He crowns us first. He crowns us first, and then we cast our crown before him. If the stars can give him reverence, the stars know God by name. He knows all of them by name. Why can't we? Amen? Amen. We have to give him reverence. In Africa, um, my ministry there, I don't like to say my ministry because it belongs to all of us who are part of it. Um, we have a church in, in Nakuru and one in Nairobi, which is the capital of Kenya, and more are coming. My spiritual son, now mind you, this is thousands of miles away, can pick me up in the realm of the spirit faster than anyone over here. And he'll say, Dad, God had me pay for this, this. And sometimes I just sob because I'm just like, but the, the thing about it is, is that this is that spiritual connection. It's not that I'm lacking that here with somebody. It's because there's a greater purpose between him and I. Just like Jonathan, when David met him, he said that he loved him as much as he loved his soul. And when he put on his armor, it all fit. He put it on and everything fit. So there was a connection between Jonathan and David. He didn't put Saul's armor on, he put Jonathan's on. Amen? Yeah. So you see the connection? So there in Africa, they don't have the what we have here. I can look out the window and see a paved street. There they don't have that. Only in the big city, obviously, in Nairobi, because it's a big city. They depend on the crops to survive. But they are faithful to God. They spend Sundays in church all day long. First they have their, their Sunday school for the kids, then they have their service, and then they, they pray for the sick, they do a Bible study, and they just spend time together fellowshipping all day long. Because they know that the rest of the week they're not going to have that ability. You know, to, to go from here to there, you have to have fail because they have buses and so on and so forth. And they don't have cars, so wherever they walk, wherever they go, they have to walk. But if you see the way these people praise God, with the little bit that they have, you literally end up on the floor yourself. Because they literally live by faith every single day. They don't know where the next meal is coming from. They don't know, you know, a lot of things, but they have faith in God. And they know that their place is going to be in heaven. Even the children worship God and they dance for him. And 
to see a generation of children who give God reference like that, to go to heaven, can you imagine being there with the King of Glory, yes. where you can have a conversation with him, one on one? I don't know how I would react to see him standing in front of me, to finally see his face, or to see the face of God. Can you imagine it? We, we really can't because we don't have an image. God is spirit, but he can transform himself into anything too. And so we give God glory because we know that our final destination is a place that cannot be touched by anything that is evil, that is not, there's no death, there's no decay, that we will be able to rejoice, that we will be able to expand um, beyond anything we could possibly imagine. Um, I can't imagine the colors in heaven. I'm sure that they're even more beautiful than they are here. There's no contamination. You know, the animals. I'm sure there's animals. Jesus is coming in a horse, so there is animals. Right? So, the point of this, of, of this uh, message is our heavenly home. We have to keep focus on where it is that we are going to go. And just like the little trap that the enemy had for him, could derail you into losing your salvation. So that's why we depend on the Holy Spirit for his wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to say, okay, enough. I have to go because this is getting ugly and I'm not going to lose my salvation over something stupid. That's right. Amen. Amen. So we pay, att if we pay attention. Sometimes things happen to me and people say things to me and I just keep walking. Because I know Carlos, you know, and the devil knows what buttons to push. Yes, yes. He knows exactly what buttons to push. And I walk away, and as much as it may hurt, as much as I may even cry about it, I just go in my room and I turn it over to God. But if I respond, then I'm having a full-fledged conversation with the enemy. Amen, yes, amen. Yes. And you don't need to have a conversation with him. Not even the archangel, when they were fighting over the, the body of Moses, did he have a conversation with Satan? He said, The Lord will use you. That's it. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went into the wilderness. And the devil showed up. And what was the first thing he said? If you are the son of God. See, he was already starting to put that. And that's what he does with us. So the point in the message today is keep your eyes on your heavenly home. It's already decorated for you. You're not going to have to go there and paint. You're not going to have to call there and call Home Depot to come deliver anything. Everything is already set for you. Amen? Amen. And people are talking about the tribulation and all of this. You have no idea what all of that is. We need to have a Bible study on what the tribulation is. Because a lot of people are confused. Oh, the vaccine is now the, you know, the mark of the devil. <laughs> Last year was a piece of rice. The year before that was, you don't know. You don't know. And there's people out there who don't go to church that know the scriptures better than we do. <laughs> Amen? Yes. So, um, in closing, I just want to say that um, I will be praying for all of us, for the growth that God puts people in our path that we can invite to church, not necessarily here, but to speak let me put it to you this way. When you invite someone to church, you're really technically inviting them to you because you are the church. Amen. Amen? So whatever you represent to them, that's the church. Not the building. 
you know, and invite them into you. And take as long if you need to listen, listen. Don't interrupt, let them talk, because sometimes listening is what people want. They want validation. You know, they want to be heard. This happened to me, this happened to me. And they may say things to you that may have never been said to anyone before. Amen? Amen. I pray that this bless this message has blessed you. Um, I know it was short, <laughs> but to the point. Yes. Amen. 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 And that um, we pray for Apostle Tuala, that wherever she's at, she's at, she's having a good time, and uh, that she doesn't forget us and brings us all something. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and I'll be praying for you all. Thank you. And uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Of all the fears that grip our hearts, no fear is greater than the fear of death. There are those who will tell you that death is a natural part of life. But if death is just a part of life, then why does it cause us such anger and sorrow? When God created humanity, he intended for us to grow more and more beautiful over time. But in one tragic moment, we unleashed sin into the world and everything broke, including our bodies. Death is the ultimate consequence of sin and it fills God's heart with anger and sorrow even more than it does ours because death was not a part of God's original plan. The Bible says that when Jesus approached the tomb of his friend Lazarus, he quaked with rage and his eyes filled with tears. He was overwhelmed by the suffering caused by death, a curse we had brought upon ourselves. Death's curse was physical. Both the world and our bodies were decaying. But death's curse was also spiritual, eternally separating humanity from their creator, the source of all light, love, and life. But because of God's amazing love, he chose to surrender all power and glory to rescue us from death. Jesus, God's only son, was expelled from the presence of the Father and thrust into complete darkness in our place. He took humanity's curse upon himself, breaking death's grip on us and purchasing humanity a place at the Father's side forever. A day is coming when the true King will return at last to restore the world to its full glory and us with it, renewing both soul and body. You'll still be yourself, but even more so. You'll finally be the real you. On that day, we'll look at each other and say, I always knew you could be like this. I saw glimpses of the real you, flashes of it, and now here you are. Our future is not an ethereal, impersonal one. You're not going to float through the clouds. You're going to walk. You're going to eat. You're going to laugh. You're going to hug. You're going to sing in realms and degrees of power and joy that you cannot now imagine. Some will tell you not to fear death because it's part of life. But Jesus says not to fear death because it's been defeated. And the day will come when Jesus embraces you with his nail-scarred hands and says, Welcome home. I have so much to show you. <laughs>